Today we're very briefly going to talk about a logical idea known as the law of excluded middle. We'll look at a couple of examples of it for the purposes of looking at a really famous mathematical result. But that being said, we're not going to go very deeply into the logic. I'm introducing it just so that we kind of know what's going on a little bit below the surface. So let's see what this law of excluded middle is. So it says, for any mathematical statement p, p is true or not p is true. So that seems pretty clear because if not p is true, then p is false. So in other words, for any mathematical statement p, p is either true or false. In other words, the statement p or not p is a tautology. And by a tautology, I mean a statement that is always true. And that's because if p is true, we have true or false. But if p is false, we have false or true. That gives us a true statement regardless. Now I will say that not everyone agrees with this law of excluded middle, but we're not gonna go deeply into how logicians or philosophers might seem a little sketched out by this law. Maybe if you are or you know any philosophy YouTubers, I'd love to do a collab on something related to the philosophy of mathematics, be it this or something else. Okay, so now let's look at two non-controversial examples and one that's a little bit sketchy. So the first one says, for every integer n, n is even or n is odd. So I don't think this is controversial because the evenness or the parity of an in integer is defined by its divisibility or lack of divisibility by two. Every integer is either divisible by two, in which case it's called even, or it's not divisible by two, in which case it's called odd. Again, no problem with this application of the law of excluded middle. So the next one, for every real number x, x is a rational number or it is not a rational number. Recall that means it's an irrational number. So how do you become a rational number? Well, you are a ratio of two integers. So I think this is pretty clear too. Either a real number is a ratio of two integers or it is not. Now the next one is a little bit more controversial. It's called Russell's Paradox. And it involves considering a set A, which is defined as the set of all sets X, where X is not an element of itself. And then after considering that object, we consider the statement P, which is A is an element of A. Okay, which tells us that the statement not P is the statement A is not an element of A. And remember the law of excluded middle should say that one of these is true. So let's see maybe how this goes wrong. And I've done this on the channel before and I did it in more depth before if you'd like to check that video out. Okay, so let's suppose that A is an element of A. But let's see, if A is an element of A, then A is a set, okay and A is not an element of itself. Oh, so if A is an element of A, that means that A is not an element of A. Okay, so that must be impossible. So we must have the other case, which is A is a not an element of A. But if A is not an element of A, well, then that means that A is an element of A just based off the rules for becoming an element of A. So that implies that A is an element of A. But that means that P is equivalent to the statement not P. But the law of excluded middle says that one of them is true. But if they're equivalent, if one of them is false, then the other one is false. But that means none of them are true. So anyway, that's where we end up with a problem here. But the problem is actually very easily fixed. And that is up here where we consider the set A. And the problem can be fixed just by the fact that this set does not exist. Okay, so anyway, now let's take this sort of idea and we're gonna look at a very classic constant and a result based around this constant. So now that we've done all that work reviewing this law of excluded middle, let's look at an application. This is a really classic application. And it says there exists irrational numbers x and y such that x to the y is rational. Okay, so let's get going. So let's consider 
the number, the square root of two to the power square root of two. And let's look at two cases. So case number one, the square root of two to the square root of two is rational. And in this case, we're done. So this implies we are done because we have an irrational number, the square root of two is irrational, to the power of an irrational number, which is rational. Okay, but what if it's not rational? So that would be case number two. So the square root of two to the square root of two is not rational. And this is where we've applied the law of excluded middle. Our statement is the square root of two to the square root of two is rational. And so this would be not our statement. So one of them must be true by this law of excluded middle over here. Okay, well, what happens if this is not rational? Then we consider the following object the square root of two to the square root of two, all raised to the square root of two. Now by our assumption, root two to the root two is irrational in this case. And then we know that root two is irrational by maybe common knowledge. We won't prove that here. We've proven numbers are irrational on the channel before. But now we can do exponent rules to see that this is the square root of two squared because we have root two times root two in the exponent but then the square root of two squared is exactly two, which is rational. So either way we look at it, we found an irrational to an irrational, which is rational. Now I'd like to point out that this is really non-constructive because looking at this proof, we don't know exactly which example gets us to the end. Is it the example in this first case or is it the example in the second case? So although we've narrowed it down to two different cases of numbers that are irrational to the irrational, which are rational, we don't know exactly which one fits the bill here. That being said, maybe we don't from this proof, but humanity does because there is a much longer proof, which we won't do in this video, that shows that this number is in fact irrational. This is known as Gelfand's constant. And like I said, this is known to be irrational, but the proof is quite hard. Okay, so now that we've looked at this, which is probably the most classic proof of this result, let's look at a constructive proof. So that is we'll give concrete examples of X and Y that are irrational that make this happen. So for our second proof, we're gonna consider the following two numbers. And here we'll use X and Y for these two numbers. We'll set X equal to the square root of two. We know that is irrational, so I won't prove that. I will prove the other one is irrational just for good measure. And so we'll set y equal to the log base two of nine. And now, like I said, we will fill in this claim, which is that y is irrational. Okay, so let's see the proof of this claim. So we're gonna do this by contradiction, which is the typical way to show that numbers are irrational. So let's suppose by way of contradiction that y is a rational number. So that means it can be written as a over b where a and b are integers. So that means we have log base two of nine equals a over b. But now let's see, multiply both sides of this equation by b. So that will give us b times log base two of nine equals a. But now we can use logarithm rules to rewrite this as the log base two of nine to the b equals a. So that's a good place to be. Now we can apply the logarithm exponential duality to change this from a logarithmic equation to an exponential equation. And that will be nine to the b equals two to the a. But now we've reached our contradiction. That's because two to the a is most definitely an even number, whereas nine to the b is most definitely an odd number. So we have a setup where an odd number is an equal to an even number, which like I said, is a clear contradiction. So what did we contradict? We contradicted this assumption way up here that y was a rational number. So that means it must be impossible for y to be a rational number. So in other words, y is an irrational number. 
Okay, so now we've got two irrational numbers, x and y, and now we're ready to exponentiate them to make sure that we get a rational number. So let's do that. Let's look at x to the y power. So this is the square root of two to the log base two of nine. But now we can write nine as three squared and use exponent rules to rewrite this as square root of two to the two times log base two of three. But again, that's gonna simplify down to two to the power log base two of three, which is the number three, which is clearly rational. Okay, good, so we've got explicit examples of irrational numbers that exponentiate two rational numbers, which in fact means we didn't need to muck about with the law of excluded middle like in our first proof. That being said, I think it's a really interesting logical topic, which I don't know much about. But like I said, if anyone out there wants to do a collab on something like this, I'd be down. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.